Welcome everybody to our podcast today. We're so happy that you have joined us. We hope that you're having an awesome day today. I've got an awesome word to share with everybody on this wonderful Monday, Monday podcast day. I want to talk to you today about change. I think we are in crucial times that uh, we need to understand what change is. And I'm going to read to you a scripture, a famous scripture that perhaps you've heard, read, found in Romans chapter 12. And I'll read verse uh, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. And then verse 2 goes on to say this, and this is where we need to really tune in. It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His will is good. It's pleasing and it is perfect. I think that it's speaking of transformation in that scripture and we've read it, we talk about it, we've preached it about renewing the mind and that's so key. One thing I want to stress today is how change is so vital. Change is vital and what happens when we don't change? I think oftentimes we can get into rut where we think we are changing or sometimes we get in a rut and we're not changing uh as quickly as we should, or we're not changing uh, like we should in a better version of us. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about change. And so change is key. Change is vital. God is asking us to change. We should never be the same kind of people. We should always be getting better. We should always be moving from glory to glory, from victory to victory, from faith to faith. We are not called to go backwards. We're called to move forward. And in the last season that you were in, uh, perhaps you went through situations that were difficult. um, And it's through those situations that we can actually change for the better. And so we have to know, we have to understand what change is and how God wants us to change. What can thrust us into change. And here in the scripture is telling us, do not be trans, do not conform to the patterns of this world. Meaning that if I don't change and if I don't transform, then that means that I'm conforming to something. I'm conforming conforming to the patterns of this world. And so we have to understand that, are we changing? Those are some of the questions that we need to ask ourselves. Am I changing? Am I becoming better? Or am I maybe stalling the change? Do I not want to change? Change has to happen now. Change has to occur every single day. And there's actually a benefit to change. When, when we decide that we don't want to change, you're actually hurting yourself. You're not hurting anybody else. You're hurting yourself. Change is something that needs to occur now. We can't wait to change. Well, I'm waiting for the perfect opportunity to change. No, change can occur on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, depending on what it is for each individual. Everybody listening to me, watching me, everybody needs change in certain areas of their lives. Nobody has arrived. You know, we live in this body and until we have a glorified body and we all get to Jesus, we all need to change be it uh, our way of thinking, uh, maybe emotionally certain areas of our lives. That's why Paul said, and he was very strict about it. He said, I'm no longer, you've been wanting milk, you know, and he said, stop with the elementary teachings. In other words, move on to maturity. And so he said, I once spoke like a child, you know, spoke like a child. I talk like a child, you know, I I reason like a child. Then I become a man. And so we are constantly are individuals that should be changing. Change is something that you should long for. Change is something that you should want and desire on a daily basis. And so we can't drag through change. We have to be excited about change because change is vital for our growth, vital for success in our lives. Um, And you have to just go, you know, God can change me. I I don't have to do anything in the works of the flesh. God is a God that can change me. Whatever area of my life I need to change. And so we have to make certain life changes. Um, And let me just give you this definition of change, first and foremost. Change is growth. That's what change is. Simply change is growth. Every time you change, you're growing. And so when you change and you change consistently, then that means that you're growing. When you don't change, or I should say it this way, when you have grief to change, when you are dreading change, when you don't want to change and you're doing it reluctantly, you don't really want to change, then that will always breed grief. Hear what I'm saying? Grief will always come from a decision to, to reluctantly change because change is a decision. I have to decide to change. 
Nobody can force me. I can go to church all day. But if I don't change, then I am going to breed grief in my life. Sooner or later, what I'm going to reap is grief. But when I decide to change, what I'm saying is I want to grow. I want to grow up. And so we can actually get so caught up in areas in our life where we don't quickly change. It's possible to live our life, exist, be in ministry, you know, this, that, and the other, but yet we are not succeeding at quickly changing. And so one of our heart's desire, one of the desires of God, and one of our heart's desire should be to, to, to change rapidly, to change and not hesitate, you know, to bring about that change. So, and, and, and I'd like to say this, and everybody could probably vouch for this, that most people that fail are the ones that change quickly. People that are succeeding are probably the ones that are more reluctant to change. But when you fail or you have had a setback or something horrific happened to you or a storm came to your life, those are the ones that really change because you don't want to go through that or you want to change certain areas of your life. And so if you don't change, hear me, this is very important. You are going on a downward spiral. Every time we decide we don't want to change, you're just going downward. You're not going upward. You're going downward. I'm talking about positive changes. I'm not talking about a negative change. Positive changes are key in our lives if we're going to grow. Positive changes are key if we're going to go up. As a matter of fact, successful people will always tell you one of the things that they have in common is they're constantly changing. We are constantly called to evolve and become better and better and better. And so we are called to change on the inside. When there's change on the inside, it will reflect on the outside. We cannot be the same individuals that we were a year ago. We have to be individuals that are better. I should be better than a year ago. I should learn from my failures and then move towards a better me. You've got to be better than last year. Whatever last year, your version of last year for you was, you should be better than that. You should always strive to be better. And so change and the definition of change is this growth, but it also means to become different, becoming different. It also means an alteration. It also means a transformation. So when I'm changing, it means to exchange one thing for another, a better version of me. This is who I used to be, but this is who I am becoming. And so we should all long for that on a daily basis. Uh, it also means to make different. In other words, you're not the same. You are changing. It also means anything that is different from what it originally was. It means to make, I love this one, radically different. Not progressively, but radically different. We should be able to look and see the evident change in your life. So we're called constantly. God calls us to spiritual growth. That's why Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. There's a guy by the name of Matthew in the Bible. He was one of the disciples and he underwent a significant change. Matthew was a tax collector and he went it, it, through such a radical change. It wasn't just a progressive change. It was a real radical change in Matthew's life. It was evident to everybody. Matthew was a dishonest tax collector and he was very driven by greed. That was his drive. So he had heard about Jesus. He knew about Jesus. Jesus had walked, you know, he walked the streets. And here's Matthew, a very dishonest guy. He deceived people. He stole from people. He was greedy. And so Jesus comes and chooses him as a disciple. And the Bible says that in that time, the tax collectors were so corrupt. They would extort money from people. Uh, they were always stealing from people. They were very greedy men, you know. So what Jesus does is he makes an invitation to Matthew. And he says, Matthew, be my disciple. Come and follow after me. And you know what Matthew does? Matthew says yes immediately, and he responded to the change immediately. He accepts Jesus in his heart, and you know what he does? He throws a farewell feast in his own home there in Capernaum. And the Bible says that he invited everybody. He invited all of his friends, and he said, everybody's got to meet Jesus. Everybody's got to meet this Savior who changed my life. And I'm not just talking about your salvation. I'm talking about undergoing change on a continual level, on a continu continual change every single day. Whatever it is that God is calling you to change. Look, you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit prompts us. He puts an impulse, if you will. He, he, he challenges us on a continual basis to be better, to strive for better. And so here's Matthew, and he throws a huge party for Jesus because he wants all of his friends to meet him. 
and he collected a harvest of souls. Here's this tax collector who was greedy at one time, but then came to Jesus. See, Matthew wasn't hesitant for change. Matthew immediately responded. He didn't look back. He didn't say, but what if I lose this? But what if? Sometimes fear prevents us from even changing. He left everything behind. He didn't question. He didn't say, now how am I going to live? He didn't say, well, I make my wealth this way. This is how my life is. And I'm secure in this area. I mean, think about this, Matthew. He's uncertain about his future now. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He abandoned all. Even the pressures, think about it, of the world at that time. Yet he knew that there was a promise of eternal life. And so he preached for 15 years in Jerusalem. Matthew. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, one of my favorite scriptures found in the English Standard Version. And it says, so we don't lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. But inwardly we are being renewed day by day. And then it goes on to say, for this momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look now to the things that are seen, we don't look to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are, they're, they're just temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And so here's a scripture that's telling me we are, we don't lose heart because outwardly we're being wasted away. And what he's saying, to, what, there's, what this, this, this writer is telling me inwardly, Paul is saying, you are being renewed day by day. That should be our greatest desire, that the internal be changing constantly. What inside of you needs to change? What has the Holy Spirit prompted you? What is what has the Holy Spirit been tugging at you, telling you you need to change in this area? And what have you been resisting? The Bible calls that resistance rebellion because rebellion is nothing more than knowing what to do, but yet not doing it and disobeying. And so it's important for us to go, I want to change. I desire to change and not resist change. So number one, you cannot change if you resist change. There is no way you will ever change because you're resisting to change. See, we got to stop blaming everybody for our lack of change. You know, well, I didn't change because of my grandmother. Well, your grandmother passed away a long time ago. and We've got to move on. <laughs> We cannot blame anybody for a lack of change in our lives. That is a decision of self. It is nobody else's decision. Now, when we resist that change, you know, we, the Bible says that he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And so we can't change when we're rebellious. We cannot change when we're stubborn. We cannot change when we are idolizing our own opinion and our own ideas. As a matter of fact, that is stubbornness. Stubbornness is, is like that of idolatry. Why idolatry? Because we are in love with our own ideas that we're not willing to lay them down and surrender and say, God, I, you know, I need a change in this area. And so we have to keep changing. We have to keep learning. I, I want to challenge everybody. You've got to keep growing, keep learning. See, if I stop changing, if you stop changing, you, you've got to understand what happens when we don't change. I've been speaking this to my leadership and I, I want you to hear it. It's going to be in my school of ministry and I'm going to hit it hard. But see, when you stop changing, you are not authentic. Anybody who does not change is not authentic. In other words, you become fake. You are a fake individual because you stop growing. In other words, when I'm, when I'm no longer changing for the good, but I'm becoming worse, I, I, I disobeyed God. I disobeyed the voice of God. And I'm not changing towards a better me. I'm not transforming. I'm conforming now. I'm conforming to a certain way of, 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 of thinking, a certain lifestyle, a certain way of doing things. And I'm no longer changing. Then I become fake. Nobody wants to be around a fake person. But authenticity, authenticity to be real are people who are constantly changing. So number one, you've got to stop resisting change. Number two, you've got to know that change will always make you authentic. We always want to be around people who are authentic. Nobody wants to be around a fake person. We all want to be around authentic people. And then number two or three, you must be teachable. You've got to be teachable. You've got to want to grow. You know, it's very hard, even as a pastor, to teach people. And I bump into people all the time where they're not very teachable. You know, and you can't really disciple people who are not teachable. They will resist you. 
They will resist your correction. They will resist uh, things that you're trying to do in their lives. You're trying to help them. You, you know, it's kind of like a horse. You, you see these great, amazing horses and they're championship horses, but you know, you've got to break them in. And that requires, and that's hard work to break somebody in. And sometimes people aren't very teachable, but you can't change when you're not teachable. And so when, when the student is ready, the teacher will always appear. But when we think that we are better and we've got it all down and we've got the best ideas, listen, the teacher can't show up. The teacher only shows up when the student shows up. So be a teachable person. Number three or four, <laughs> you must be coachable. You've got to be coachable. One, one thing is to see something, you know, I see this in you. And another thing is to change it. I can see something about myself, but another thing is to change it. And so when I am coachable, I am, I'm able to coach, be coachable. So if the coach comes to me, I used to play volleyball. I used to run track. I used to do all kinds of soccer. I was like midfielder and I ran, you know, center forward. I used to love sports and I ran track and my coach, I had a volleyball coach, no lie. If she's listening, God bless you. I forgive you. But she used to actually throw volleyballs in my head, at my head. And you know, I was the digger, you know, I was, was smaller. I wasn't as tall as the other people. I'm not short. I just wasn't as tall as the other people. And uh, I was the digger. And she would, when I would miss a ball, she'd literally like hit me. And in those times, you can only imagine what, how old I am. But in that time, you know, it was allowed to hit. <laughs> and so my coach would hit me. And, and what she was trying to say is be teachable, change it. This is how you stand. This is how you get down on the ground. This is how you get down and dirty. And so I could say, I see something. This is an area I see. This is a defect I see in my life. But if I don't change it, that's another thing. So we've got to be coachable. Now, there are people that are probably listening to me and you're like, oh my goodness, I don't really want to change that area. You know, you've got to be, and there's people who are unwilling to change. And when you're unwilling to change, listen, you're going to go around the same mountain. You're going to encounter the same problems. You know, what, what's the definition of a lunatic? It's doing the same thing and expecting different results. You want different results. You want to go higher. You want to succeed. You want to always hit and punch the enemy in the face. Keep changing. You know your best asset against the power of darkness is to keep changing. Don't let anybody stop your change. Don't excuse yourself because of the lack of change. Quit blaming your past because of your lack of change. God is constantly give us opportunities and he will give us opportunities to change. Sometimes the storm causes the change. Saul in the Bible, he had the opportunity to change. He was actually the chosen guy to be the king. God chose him. The people were like, we want a king. God's like, I'm your king. And they're like, no, we want a king. God says, fine, I'll give you Saul. But Saul, he had opportunities to change continuously. God spoke to Saul through the prophets. But the Bible says that jealousy got in his heart. And because of that jealousy, he was so wrapped up in his jealousy. When he heard that song, Saul killed a thousand, David his 10,000. Hey, Sal, Saul, listen, a thousand's pretty good. And he could have just dropped it there, but he didn't. And so jealousy just allowed him to not change. God gave Judas an opportunity to change. Judas, the betrayer. Jesus is sitting there right before they're going to betray him, right before they're going to crucify him. And he says, somebody in here is going to betray me. And Judas was sitting right next to the master, eating a dinner, a dinner, his last dinner with the master. He had opportunities to change, but he didn't. And betrayal took over his heart. The Bible says in 1 John that the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is what gets us. And sometimes we're so caught up in so many things that we don't want to change because pride is consuming. Listen, I want to encourage you today. It's time to change. It's time to make change a lifestyle. Change in an area. I want to challenge you this week. Start changing. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. The Holy Spirit tells you what to change. Change for you may be different for change for me. You know, there's areas in my life that I've been so challenged in the last year, two years, that, that I've got to change. That if I don't change, you know, we're out of the game. We've got to be people that listen and, and understand and then take steps toward that change. Whatever that is. Maybe you lack identity. Maybe you have so much rejection. Maybe you've been fake for a long time. Listen, if you've been fake, nobody calls you to be fake. You're fake because you chose to be fake. You know, I'm as real as they come. Anybody who's near me will tell you I'm as real as they come. I'm very confrontational. I have no problem getting in people's face, getting in your face because I love people. And I get it. I'm not called to everybody. You know, I, I, I understand that. I understand my assignment. I love change. I'm like, I'm like a raw coach sometimes. 
You know, I've got this incredible trainer that trains me and she's just so raw. She gets in my face and she's like, is that all you've got, Pat? You know, and she'll get in my change in, in my face. But you know what? She's changing. She's changing something on the inside of me. Disciplines that are in my life. I don't know what you got to change, but we all have to change something. And so I, I love to see the transformation in people's lives. You know, I'm kind of like that coach sometimes behind you going, you got this, you can do it. Come on, push a little harder. Come on, you can run that other, other lap. Stop crying. Wipe your tears off your face. You got this. We got to stop crying about change. We got to stop being little babies about change. We've got to say, God, I embrace change. Where do you want me to change? And let's get the show on the road because I don't want to be stagnant. I don't want to be, you know, cast off and I don't want to be out of the game. I want to live my life 80, 90, or whenever the Lord decides to take me, if I live that long, but I want to be in the game. I want to be on the cutting edge of everything. And the only way to do that and to be authentic. See, when people look at my life, they, they go, oh man, she's real. I am very real. And so that, that gives people hope. And so I'm, I'm challenging everybody listening to this podcast, watching me through YouTube. Listen, it's time to change and make change a lifestyle. So I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit right now, even at the sound of my voice, he's convicting you of areas that you know you've got to change. Stop resisting change. It's for your own good. Do what you've never done. Do what the Holy Spirit is prompting you to do and stop your procrastination. Stop saying, I'll do it tomorrow. Stop making excuses as to why you don't change. I declare in the name of Jesus that God will give you the grace because he will. God gives you the grace to be able to go through that change. If you're in a storm and you had, listen, I just went through a storm. I was in a storm. It was horrible, horrible. But that storm thrusted me to change. So I thank God for it. Now, I wouldn't want to go through it again, but I thank God for it because it allowed a change in my life. And now I'm going, I like what's happening. I like what God is doing. Listen, I encourage you today. And I declare in the name of Jesus that you are obeying the Holy Spirit and you will stop resisting change in Jesus name. Amen. Blessings, everybody. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy. Go into my Gmail. You can send me a, a, a email there. Any questions that you have, any requests that you have for podcast, I'd be more than happy to do so um, and just deliver. Please go like, please go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Can't wait to hear from you. Uh, and you can comment there underneath. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the person that comments, the first person that comments uh, to these YouTubes and you share it. You've got to share it, share it, share it, share it, share it, share it, my YouTube. I'm going to send you a free book. I'm going to send you my free book. Listen, if you're the first one to, sh to share my YouTube, make sure you put, hey, I shared. you got to share to at least five people, okay? So share to five people on YouTube, share my podcast, post it, put it on your story. I promise you, I'm going to send you a book. So put your name on there, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And, uh, and I will send you a free book. I will personally sign it and autograph it. So um, I love you all. Thank you so much for listening, tuning in. Until next time.